peut y aller. OK, alors bienvenue à tout le monde à la, au séminaire de ce matin. Le séminaire va être présenté par Tian Luang, un étudiant au doctorat avec moi, sur la visualisation de grands nuages de points, euh, la visualisation interactive de grands nuages de points. Et quand on parle de, de grands nuages de points, on parle de plusieurs centaines de millions de points. Et quand on parle d'interactif, c'est qu'on veut que ça se fasse en temps réel. So, welcome to this uh, today's seminar. Uh, the seminar will be presented by Etienne Luang, a PhD student with me. And the topic is the visualization, interactive visualization of very large point clouds. And when we're talking about large point clouds, we're talking about you know, hundreds of millions of points to be visualized in real time. So, Etienne? Yes, sir. Okay. You can share your screen. Yes, I will share my screen. Okay, uh, do you see my screen well? Yes. Okay, I will start my presentation. Okay. Well, um, hello everybody. I am Duket Luang. I'm a PhD student of Professor Denny. And today I will uh, present to you my research project. Uh, the title is uh, Parallelism for Fast and Interactive Visualization for the Big 3D Mesh. Uh, first, I will uh, <clears throat> present some overview of my project and uh, how it works with uh, 3D Mesh uh, with the very big data. Uh, nowadays, we see the, the needs of um, 3D visualization increase uh, very fast in a wide range of applications in research, industry, entertainment, transport, security, and even in uh, finance and investment. And all of these applications tend to process and visualize very big data. And to visualize a very, very big 3D data, we face three main problems. First of all, it is an extremely high workload in computation. The second main problem is a limitation in memory. And the third one is the interactivity between multiple scales. And we can find the popular solution in the previous work um, as follows. Uh, firstly, the big boy cloud will be decomposed manually in the step of scanning or after scanning. Next, the boy cloud will be triangulated or homogenized into the particles of boy cloud. And then the um, particles of the boy cloud will be sealed by the overlapped borders. And at last, um, we will render each part to visualize it. Um, this method has uh, advantages um, that uh, it shares the executed time for actually high workload, and it can relax the memory requirement by the decomposition. However, um, it has um, very big problem. <clears throat> Firstly, it requires manual work in the composition and sewing step. Secondly, the triangulation and polygonization takes very long time. Thirdly, uh, we face the low interactivity between the user and the system due to the different of data structure and different of um, uh, in coordinate frames uh, of the particles of the void cloud. So I want to propose um, a method which can in inherit the um, advantages and overcome the disadvantages of the previous work. And we can take advantages of GPU computing and parallel programming in our proposed method. In our system, uh, there is no need for the manual work. 
and we will uh, replace the triangulation and uh, polygonization by plane fitting and B ply B ply fitting, and we use only one unique coordinate frame and unique data structure for all particles of the four clouds. So we will increase uh, interactivity. And here is um, overall of the pro chart of my um, proposed method. Uh, we will start with a um, very fast uh, reader for ply phi. It's run in parallel. And next is a PCA oxy based decomposition. We can run it also in parallel. And in the step of brick classification, we will collect all of the lip bricks to do the fitting. For the graph sur surface um, brick, we can apply the plane fitting. And for the non graph surface brick, we can apply the B supply fitting. And Next, we will plan all the sur surface elements to connect um, the surface element <clears throat> to get the whole visualization. And the last step is uh, ren the rendering step. Here we can see uh, the uh, blue block, um, which are the block uh, uh, completely done. And the green one is the one is on the progress of optimization. And the next step is um, yellow blocks. <clears throat> and now we will go to the details of the proposed method. Firstly is a parallel reader for Blyfy. Here Blyfy is a standard Wi-Fi for 3D data and to read one ply file, well, we need two steps. First of all, we need to understand the header. As you see in the picture here, in the header, we can see uh, all the property and element inside is uh, fine. And the step two, <clears throat> we will read the text to translate the data from the text to the mm, programming code. And here, there are two ways to um, to code the data. Uh, first, by ASCII code, and secondly, is uh, the binary code. And we can apply the parallel reason in the step two here to save the time. However, if you run the program on GPU, we need to develop. Um, a set of uh, functions to process and uh, in now for, for for the data for the text. And here <clears throat> is um, parallel design for the reader. Um, there is a difference between the binary binary Wi-Fi and ASCII Wi-Fi. For the binary Wi-Fi, uh, because the the length of the word is, uh, is, is the same for all work. <clears throat> so we, we don't need to use a um, button memory for this. However, with the ASCII code, be, because the length of words are different. So we need to add the button to the memory to locate all the data <clears throat> on the GPU. And we arrange it <clears throat> by the thread read and block to translate on the word of text to the number in the C and C++ program. And in the second part, I will talk about how we can decompose the, 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 the space containing the point cloud. We can use the PCA oxy base for this. Uh, as I man mentioned, um, to visualize um, 3D data, we need to uh, structure all the data and the space containing the data. And the oak tree is the 
popular data structure for 3D data. And the containing space of the 3D mesh will be subdivided until we meet the maximum depth of the out tree and uh, or we meet the graph surface. The graph surface here is the surface which is uh, approximate to a plane. And to recognize one surface is um, a graph surface or not, we will use the PCA. Uh, using the PCA, we can know the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. And when we consider the ratio of the smallest eigenvalues over the sum of all eigenvalues, um, we will compare it to the threshold. If it is small enough, we can determine that uh, that surface is graph surface or not. And here I propose to use um, the method for PCA uh, as um, reference number one here. It is Graham Smith PCA. We can run it in parallel. Normally, if the PCA is run in serial process, it will take so much time. And by using the parallel programming with the Graham Smith PCA, we can reduce the processing time and it will run very fast on GPU. And in order to parallelize the com computation on the bricks of the O3, we need to index them efficiently. And here in uh, our proposed system, I divide the, the bricks uh, into the octet. In each, la each level, uh, one brick will be subdivided into eight children ones, as you see here, and we will arrange the the points of the point point cloud according to the uh, the bridge and the uh, brick code. As you see here, you see here. For for example, we have uh, uh, eight bricks in the level one, which is uh, uh, indexed from one one to eight eight one. And we add some that only the brick number four one uh, has the, uh, the children bricks, and the data points will be arranged inside that brick according to the code of the children brick. And by this way, um, we can miss recognize some cases of surface Be because in this case, the uh, PCA will give us the unreliable value of eigenvalue. Uh, there are three cases. First of all, is the case where the brick contains the multiple layers of the surface, as you see uh, at the left side. Uh, second, is the brick contain multiple pieces of curved surface as the middle feature. And the last one is um, manifold surface as in the feature on the right hand. And we can uh, recognize these cases by using the process of uh, point density assessment. And next, I will talk about the fit, the fitting uh, process. Uh, there are two kinds of fitting I use in the system: the plain fitting for the graph surface and piecewise fitting for non-graph surface. For the graph surface, um, we will use a linear equation to uh, represent for the for the plane, which is approximate uh, the uh, 
point cloud inside the brick. And here we will use the, the eigenvector, which is corresponding with the smallest eigenvalue. Here we, we call it uh, V3. And we use this vector as the normal vector for the upper symmet plane P for the point cloud omega here. And we use this equation as the uh, plane of function to process in next step. And for B splice fitting, I propose a method which is called modified adjusted control point fitting. It is based on the unadjusted control point fitting and the Z value normalization which are proposed in the reference number three. Uh, it is called um, adjusted control point fitting. And we also base on the methodology for uh, the big 3D data. And in UCP fitting, the multiple level control lattice, as you see in the picture here, um, it, it is a blue part. Um, the multiple level control lattice are used to gen generate the multiple uh, by cubic is by function at the uh, yellow feature. And we use a sum function of the partial function um, as the control lattice for the whole uh, point cloud inside the grid. And this way can be applied in uh, GPU programming to reduce the processing time. If we implement it uh, in serial process, it, it will uh, take us a um, very long time. And after the fitting, we, we need to blend the surface element. Uh, we call this step is blending. And the first stage of uh, blending is uh, finding the neighborhood uh, based on the pair of neighbors. We will plan the sur surface inside two neighbor bricks. And here I use the pairs method to find the neighborhood. In uh, practice, uh, the, the pairs method mm, gives me three advantages. First, it wastes memory space. So uh, we will uh, face the, the, the second main problem of 3D big data is uh, limitation of memory. And the second disadvantage is that it requires multiple variables to uh, represent the code and to preserve the pre prefix characteristic of the code and another one, but it is a uh, small one, is the difference between the Bayer's order and the modern orders. Modern order is is the order how to index the brick. The, the I I mean that the order of the children brick inside the father brick, which is uh, used in in my system. So we need to make uh, uh, trans trans uh, translation between two orders, and we can overcome all of this this advantages with some modification. And here, a pair um, define twenty six possible direction for the neighborhood. Uh, we can see that we have uh, we have a six phase y direction and twelve x y direction and eight uh, eight direction uh, for vertex y. And we we can find the index of the neighbors by using Payer's lookup table as uh, in the reference number four and number five here.
um, two plan two surface elements um, we will uh, determine that um, there are three cases of planning first um, we plan one b slide surface and another b slide surface which uh, we call it bb planning second one is the case for one b slide surface and one planar surface we call it bp planning and another one is planning for two planar surfaces is a pp planning and we will start with the bb planning and the general idea is that we will modify uh, each surface by using a subset of new integrated points based on the vector function of both of two uh, uh, surface functions. And BP planning and PP planning will be the expansion of uh, BP planning. And here, I show you six different types of relation between two neighbor. Um, there are six types, um, S Y in different level, face Y in different level, vertex Y in different level, and S Y, face Y, and vertex Y in the same level. Because in the case of vertex Y, the two bricks um, have only one common point. So we only consider four case uh, of S Y and face Y in different levels at the same level. We will not uh, process the vertex Y relation. And here I will show you the formula uh, to get the new points for the surface in planning. Um, <clears throat> for each, each uh, common point between two surfaces, um, we will generate uh, 10 new points, uh, five new points by the X axis and uh, another five new points for the Y axis. And by this formula, we will keep the continuity of the surface and we will make it uh, smooth by this uh, formula. Mm. BB plan planning is an extension of uh, BB planning. Here we plan one planar surface and one B slice surface. And the difference here is that we will use the uh, planar function instead of the B supply vector functions as in the slide I show you with the BB planning. And we also do similarly with the PP planning to plan two planar surfaces. We will use uh, two planar functions instead of two uh, B supply function as the case of BB planning. And now I will uh, talk about the current issue and the future, the future work. Currently, uh, I face the issue in uh, plan planning, which I which I need to solve. Um, it's a floating point uh, up here in the result, as you see in the example here. And the rendering model is not started, so the future plan is. Uh, remove the floating artifact in the planning result and uh, by the way uh, optimize the fitting model and I will uh, implement the rendering model in the near future. Yeah uh, that's all of my presentation yeah thank you and uh, I'm waiting for your question. Thank you, uh, Tian. Uh, are there any questions? Maybe I can uh, ask you one that I have not asked you. 
yeah, yes, now. <laughs> yes. Uh, you you mentioned that uh, in in the future work you want to uh, develop a, a renderer. Yes. So uh, this we have not discussed a lot because we are we have been discussing, of course, the last step the, that you have uh, implemented. Yes. The, the renderer is is uh, is not a graphics engine. It's it's just a Uh, an application for visualizing yep. the data structure that you have presented today, right? Yes. Okay. So it's it's going to be based on on recasting, or I, I remember in your PhD exam you have mentioned some different solutions to this problem. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Yes. Uh, actually, I I I show you one one time some uh, possible methods uh, for the rendering. And um, I think at, at first I will try uh, two or three different one to to get the best real result, and then I will um, make my make my own make my own method. Okay. If it so you yeah. Okay, and and I have another question. In all the steps that you have covered in your presentation, yep. uh, how are all the steps? implemented on GPU or some of the steps implemented on the on the CPU what's yes, the sir. what's the what's the percentage of operations that are actually running on the GPU with respect to uh, the, the CPU uh, yes sir. Uh, actually all the system uh, is developed in CUDA yeah and uh, some step of um, the system are run in uh, CPU For example, we run the reader, uh, we run the computation of the fitting, and we run the uh, neighborhood uh, finding computation uh, in parallel, and they are run on the GPU. Okay, and, so uh, uh, yes. uh, very few, very few operations are executed on the CPU. Yes, uh, I think that is. Uh, 50-50 uh, between uh, CPU and GPU. And uh, just uh, out of curiosity, what what is the largest point cloud that you have processed uh, on which you have worked until now? Yes, until now I I, am, I have uh, I have four data. Uh, the first one is uh, uh, several hundred thousand. The second one is um, 1.7 million. The th third one is um, 3.6 million points. Uh, uh, yes, and the fourth one is um, is, is um, 70 million points. <laughs> and I have also another one bigger. It is uh, 194 million points. And um, with the with, with the first with the first For point cloud, I can run it smoothly. Uh, however, with the biggest point cloud, uh, with 194 million, I face a problem of, uh, of um, overflow. Yeah, but okay. So you have a over. You you need you you lack memory, but yeah. I, I guess uh, this is just a matter of. Uh, it, it's not a conceptual limitation of your approach. It's a uh, hardware limitation, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This is a limitation of RAM. Okay, in, in on the GPU card. Uh, no, sir. For this case, it's oh, not it's a problem CPU. of GPU because I found that the, the GPU in this case, uh, we use the GPU of uh, 8 gigabyte. However, the RAM is for, so it's a, it's a enough with the GPU, but it's right for the run. Okay, and then what's the graphic card that you're using now on your, on your uh, PC? Uh, Do you remember the, the model? The model is uh, 1080, I, okay. I think, yeah. NVIDIA. GTX, yes, okay. NVIDIA GTX uh, 1080. Okay, yeah. uh, are there any questions from other participants? Okay, so uh, if there are not 
any questions, I think we can thank uh, Tian for his talk and uh, we will, uh, I, I just uh, leave uh, the final words to Annette, maybe to inform us on the next uh, seminars or next activities. Thank you very much, Tian, for your presentation. Thank you. And uh, next week we can meet again and uh, we will have a presentation given by Geoffroy Côté, who is a student in Jean-François Lalonde's lab. Okay. Donc, merci à tout le monde et puis on se voit à la prochaine, à la prochaine occasion pour le prochain séminaire. Merci à Tienne, merci à tout le monde. Merci Annette. Merci Tienne. 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 Merci